Good morning and welcome to the weekly market update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 16th of November 2020 and the time has just gone 11.57 GMT. And it's been a fairly positive start to the European trading session. Um, on the global trade fund, things are looking a bit more positive on the back of the um, the news that 15 countries in Asia Pacific, including the likes of China, Japan, South Korea, Australia and many others, just to name a few, uh, signed up for a signed up for the regional comprehensive economic partnership. Um, this is going to make that that block the largest trading block in the world. It's going to be seen as a step forward uh, in trading relations between the, the various different nations. And many of those countries, you know, for, for example, Australia and China, have already had a fairly decent rebound from the COVID nineteen crisis. So the view is that. Uh, the, their economic recoveries will probably speed up on the back of this announcement, on the back of this planned trade trade um, trade partnership. Uh, in addition to that, we had some reasonably um, encouraging economic indicators in China overnight. Uh, retail sales was probably the most important one in the bunch. Uh, the, in, in last month, they grew by 4.3%, which is an improvement on the 3.3% registered in September, but economists were expecting a reading of 4.9, so it came in a bit below expectations. Uh, industrial output uh, grew, grew by 6.9%, unchanged on the month in terms of growth and a top forecast, whereas in for a fixed asset investment, not only did it show uh, an improvement on the month, it also managed to top forecasts as well. Speaking uh, on the election front in the US, for the first time, President Trump not, you know, admitted that Joe Biden won the election, but of course, in true, in true Trump fashion, he turned around and stated that uh, there, was, there was fraud involved, questioning the result itself. Um, you know, this could be the beginning of the Donald exiting the White House. It could also be the beginning of President Trump going down a lengthy, lengthy uh, legal battle in terms of the results from certain states. Um, also, there's kind of on the on the on the the continued optimism doing the rounds in relation to the um, to the actual COVID-19 potential drug produced by both you know, Pfizer and uh, and, Bi and BioNTech. That seems to be in the mindset of traders. Uh, and it's even though the actual health crisis continues to be an issue, uh, because let's face it, you know, we, we, um, th there are continued to be, um, sadly, uh, an increase in the number of, ca in, in, in the number of cases. Uh, it seems to me that we've just seen a, a news alert pop up saying um, European and US stocks spike higher, spike further on reports that Moderna uh, another big pharma company um, found that that their potential vaccine for COVID-19 has a 94.5% effective rate. So we're seeing progress made on, the, on, on that regard. Um, so that's going to be adding to the overall story. Keep an eye out for airline stocks. Keep an eye out for hospitality, pub chains, cinemas, gyms, and the likes, cruises. Uh, these are all sectors which were clobbered because of the pandemic and on the back of the Pfizer BioNTech optimism this time last week, um, we saw those stocks do well. So, so on the back of the Moderna story, we could see those ones do well also. Um, as always, with this video, for those of you regularly follow, what I'll do is the usual rundown, whereby I'll look, look at the week ahead article, uh, the major economic and corporate stories of the week, and then I will run through the major indices, the major currency pairs, and on top of that, the major um, quantities. So starting off, taking a look at our, at our um, taking a look at the um, at the article, it can be found on Insights. If you go to cmcmarkets.com under latest news analysis, you'll find our update. And we can see here that we have the 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 economic indicators generally covered coming come from China. Phone to phone had well received first half numbers this morning. The stock was trading higher. EasyJet have full year results out tomorrow. In recent weeks and months, airlines have been very keen to talk to be to cut their capacity because of the kind of the lean winter ahead. But keep in mind, uh, it's very interesting to see what they have to have to say in their statement with respect to the possibility um, of vaccines. Uh, also coming out tomorrow, we have U.S. retail sales covering the month of October. This is going to be interesting because obviously for, for a few months now, the US economy doesn't have, have the kind of additional uh, unemployment benefit in place. So we can get a really good idea of how uh, of what consumer sentiment is actually like over in the US. 
Speaking of that, we'll also have third quarter numbers coming out from Walmart. Um, some of the companies which managed to continue to operate throughout the COVID-19 crisis, on one hand, benefited uh, from, from online sales, uh, from sales, particularly online sales. Uh, many of them uh, had to have increased costs in relation to health, health and safety because of the, the pandemic itself. Um, tying in with that, Halfords have first half numbers. We saw they saw an increase in, uh, in the number of people looking to purchase bikes um, in the wake of the kind of the lockdown and activity is something to do. Uh, Nvidia, um, the chip maker, they have third quarter numbers coming out on Wednesday. Um, Target, US well-known US retailer, have third quarter third quarter numbers coming out on Wednesday also. Um, Royal Mail are going to be in focus. First half numbers coming out, particularly on their um, their courier service, uh, given that you know, given the surge in online online uh, consumerism uh, in the last few months because of the pandemic, uh, we've seen you know the likes the likes of FedEx and Royal Mail and, and Co all do quite well on the back of that. Uh, on Friday, we have uh, UK retail sales and public sector finances, and finally, on Friday. Williams uh, Sonoma, uh, the kind of maker of the household goods, uh, they will be posting their number, their third quarter numbers on Friday. So we'll talk now cover about the major indices. So we saw this is a fairly common theme across all the indices. You know, it wasn't that long ago, late October, early November, we saw uh, you know European U.S. stock markets either multi-month lows or, or multi-week lows. But since then, we've had a major move to the upside. This strong candle we're seeing here was the move that we saw last Monday on the back of the news from Pfizer and BioNTech that their potential COVID-19 vaccine is 90% effective. As I said earlier on in this in this video, uh, Moderna claimed that their vaccine is 94.5% effective. That's likely to be in some sort of late stage trials. Um, the, we can see here that we've been pushing higher yet again. On the FTSE 100, we're now back at levels last seen in early June. So we are talking multi-month multi highs being wrapped up on the FTSE 100. If we continue to press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting the June highs in around 6,513. And if we go beyond that, we could then be looking at heading up, heading up towards uh, this, air, this zone here. Uh, the, the, this area here that was achieved in the middle of kind of early early March in around 6,000, up towards 6,900, in around 6,890, there thereabouts. If we do see any pullbacks, kind of a kind of a, a, kind of a, a pullback or kind of a, a slight kind of re reversal in the bullish trend, we could find support from from, uh, from the back Friday's lows in around 6,258, and a move below that could take us back down toward this red line here. The 200-day moving average, and that comes into play at just just south of 6,100 in a 6,098. We can see that that metric managed to act as support um, only last only last Tuesday. So, if a metric has been important in the past, it makes it more likely it could be of importance in the future. Although there are no guarantees. That's the FTSE 100. Taking a look at what's going on over in Germany and the DAX. Like it is worth noting that going into the crisis, uh, the German market was in a better shape than than the uh, the FTSE 100. But nonetheless, uh, the German the German market um, has been in a solid upward trend, a very strong upward trend the last the last few the last few weeks. You could even argue that a, a, an aggressive upward move like that could see some sort of a pullback at some point. But given what's going on with, with the um, with the vaccine story on Moderna, we could look at retesting the last Monday's high. Which comes into play just to south of 13,300. Uh, if you take out last Monday's high, we can then be looking at targeting the August highs. Uh, that comes into play in a 13,462. And keep in mind, the highs that we saw back in September uh, were the highs were, were actually multi-month highs. They were the highest highs I've ever seen since February. So give indication of how bullish things were back then. Um, similar scenario, if we do see a bit of a move to the downside, we could find some support in around where this blue line here is, the 50-day moving average. We can see in a few occasions that metric sort of acted as support back in September. If, you know, the few areas where it acted as resistance uh, in late September into October. So once again, active resistance in, in middle of October. So if we do see a bit of a pullback on the DAX, we can head back to this blue line here, the 50 moving average in a 12,743. 
take a look at what's going on up in the US. The US markets are in by far the best shape. Um, we, it's you know it's looking likely last Monday we saw that we saw that the Dow Jones set a new all-time high. If you look at today's candle, obviously today's trading session, cash session over New York hasn't even begun yet. Um, and we're already looking at to, to retest the all-time high. So we, we this could we, we could be seeing um, new all-time highs from the US um, today potentially. If it continues to, to trade on higher from here, because we're currently trading around 29,990 there thereabouts, we could be looking heading up to the recent the Monday, last Monday's highs uh, in around 30,000 and 30,092. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking towards 30,100, 200, so on and so forth. Any moves to the downside could find support from these lows here. A few occasions, uh, that there's a general area uh, acted as support. And that's in around 28,868, you know, 28,934. So that kind of zone of around 70 odd points, 50 or 70 odd points in around there could act as support. If we move below that, we can head back down towards this blue line here, the 50 day moving average. You know, we can see that actually support recently uh, and also there again in in, in, um, in late October and on a few occasions in early October too. So keep an eye out for um, just north of 28,000, 28,010. I'd imagine it'd be a similar position on the on the, the Dow again by accident. I'd imagine it'd be a fairly similar position again on the on the um, the S and P 500. So you can see here that an, an all-time high was achieved on Monday last uh, on Monday this this day last week. We were already you know pressing higher and holding above the lows of last Tuesday and the last few sessions. And then what do you know? We're seeing the market push higher yet again. We, we're currently expecting the cash trading over in New York to begin at 33,630. If we continue to press on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting the highs achieved last Monday, which were all-time highs in a 3,674. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking, looking at targeting 3,680, 90, and then up towards 3,700. Any move to the downside could find support from this area here in around 3,511. And a move below that could take us back toward this blue line here, the 50-day moving average at 3,410. Well, take a look now at what's going over on the euro dollar. Now, in the last few weeks and months, um, the, US dollar, the US dollar has acted as a bit of a safe haven place. So whenever there's been uncertainty in stocks and, and to a lesser extent commodities, we've seen money flow into, often seen money flow into the US dollar. Conversely, Whenever equity markets have been strong and people are, and, and 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 there's a bullish outlook in relation to the how the, how the health crisis is, is playing out, or in fact how the U.S. election has gone, or in relation to any kind of stimulus packages, or indeed uh, the vaccine hopes, we've often seen dollar weaken, and in turn the euro and other currencies push on higher. And as you can see here, um, the last few weeks, the last few sessions, euro dollar has been moving to the upside. In fact, only last Monday uh, hit its highest level since September. So we're talking, we did, we did hit a kind of multi-month high, multi-week high uh, last Monday. The market had a, had, a, had, a, had a move lower. It traded below the 50-day moving average, but quite quickly got back above it. And we're, pre we're moving on higher yet again. If we continue to move on higher and we take out last Monday's high, it could take us back up toward this area in on the kind of one spot 20 zone. If we do fall back below the 50-day moving average, which comes into play at one spot 1771. It could take us back down towards this yellow line here, the water day moving average, and that comes into play at one spot 1713. We know there's a bit of an area of consolidation from the metric uh, at the beginning of the month. And if you go below that, we could then be like heading down toward this zone here in around one spot 1612. Um, we can see on a couple of occasions that general area acted as support. Uh, and actually, in fact, the lows of last week were actually even on uh, that Wednesday, the 4th of November, were even lower. It was one spot 1602. Um, so if, if, if we can if we take out those lows, that could be an indication that we're in for a fur further uh, downside move. And it could take us back down towards this area here, 
I'll just knock that off. I could take that back down to the kind of 114 zone because you see at 114 acted a resistance in early June on the way up and also acted as resistance in around middle of July before the market then really took off. Take a look now at pound versus the US dollar. It's con there's continuous uncertainty in relation to the uh, in, in relation to the UK EU trade situation. That being said, you know it's 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 there's still a possibility we could wind up with um, n no deal in place. There's still certainly the on the go, but at the same time, there isn't any kind of huge moves in the currency markets. Um, taking a look at the pound dollar, we can see here at, at the, since about late September, we've been a nice upward trend, which kind of ties in with the broader upward trend, you know, of the last few months. So if you take if you draw a line between the lows of late September with the lows of early November, you get this trend line along here. While we hold above that trend line, it's like a, the broader uptrend could continue. Uh, that, 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 that is the case. We could then be looking at heading back up towards the highs that were achieved in September. And if you go beyond that, we could be heading up towards one spot 35.15. And keep in mind, one spot 35.15 was the highs that was achieved uh, in December last year, on the back of the conservative government, on the back of the very strong victory for the Conservative Party in the UK general election, um, any moves to the downside could find support from this trend line here, or which also sort of coincides with this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, which comes into play just south, well, below 130, in at one spot 29.70 there thereabouts. So if we do move to the downside, 130 can act as support. We're even down to the this blue line here in, in at one spot, 29.69 to be precise. Finally, coming out to commodities, let's take a look at what's going on with gold. So we're seeing further pressure on uh, on gold, which is not exactly surprising. So gold had a huge sell-off last Monday on the back of the, the vaccine hopes story. You know, people people could have the idea that. They'd rather have their money out of assets such as gold because they're considered to be low-risk assets, and they'd rather put that into, into riskier assets such as stocks, and, and to be precise, you know, stocks that are in the hospitality sector, stocks that are in the transport sector, and stocks that are in the um, travel sector. These all, benefit, these all benefited greatly on the back of optimism surrounding the COVID-19 uh, vaccine hope. So even though we did see, after Monday's brutal setup last week, we did see gold ever so slightly kind of re recouping some of those losses. I've already know we're back lower again. Uh, I believe we're down eight tenths of one percent currently. If we continue to press on lower from here, we could be looking at e testing Monday's lows, last Monday's lows. But what's interesting is that the lows that were achieved last Monday, they got close to the lows of late September, but they didn't quite get there. So this entire zone in around kind of 18, 1850, 1848, that's quite. That seems to me that that, that is quite significant. And if we do manage to, in fact, uh, hold above that level, you know, the, the kind of the wider uptrend of gold to continue, and if that is the place that the that is the play that that, that is the case, we could then be heading back up towards 1900. We could be heading back up towards the 50-day moving average in at 1905. And if we go beyond that, you know, and if we take off the highs of last Monday, we could then be looking at which come into play in around uh, 1965. If you go beyond that, we could then be looking at taking off the highs of mid-September mid in around 1973. Now, keep in mind, if we do take out 1848, you know, there aren't a whole lot of support, so we could be looking heading back down towards the kind of 1800 zone. Uh, to the top end, we could be looking at towards you know, 1818. To the bottom end, we could be looking towards 1790. So, I'm talking a zone of nearly kind of 30 bucks. Could be in a potential support area should we have a seismic break below 1848. Now, coming on lastly to the oil market. So we're already, already seeing quite large, large moves of upside in oil. Obviously, no pun intended, but the but the movements in the oil market are often um, tied in with the kind of perceptions of the global of the health of the global economy. A stronger economy is likely to increase demand for gold for for oil. So as you can see here, we had a major major move to the upside in oil 
on the back of the um, uh, last week. In fact, on, on Wednesday, it continued to rally and hit its level, highest level uh, in um, early September. So he has basically hit a, over a two month high was achieved last Wednesday. The market, the market has been going on and on. Probably not even know where it's at again. And if you know, you know, you want to continue to hold the bottom of the blue line here at the 50 movie average in a 30 spot to 60, sorry, apologies, in a 39 spot 63. While we continue to hold above that, it's likely that the kind of recent upward trend is going to continue. If you move higher from here, we could be looking at retesting this November highs in at 43 spot 05. And a move beyond that could take us back and forth the highs that were achieved in late August, um, up in around kind of 44 spot 30 there, thereabouts. Um, if you do, on the other hand, manage to move lower from here, if we do have a break below the 50-day moving average here, it could take us back down toward these lows here in around 37 spot 06, and a move below that could take us back south of 34, back to the lows that were seen early last Monday. Um, thank you for listening. That's all from this, from this video. Have a good trading week, and good luck.